Hello, 16 days ago, 32 players jostled on the start line of Snooker's annual marathon, the Betfred.com World Championship. One by one, they have fallen by the wayside and gone home to Australia, China, Belgium, Ireland and all corners of the United Kingdom, leaving us with a little local derby, Chigwell against Chelmsford. Oh yes, the only way is Essex for the trophy this year, as Ronnie O'Sullivan meets Ali Carter, just as they did four years ago in the Crucible final. There's been times in the tournament where I felt really, really, really good, you know, and I thought, you know what, this is, if I could bottle this feeling and take it out every time, you know, I played towards 300. I've been up for the battle these last two weeks, and I'll be up for the battle over the next two days. Absolute different proposition now. I think Ali's going to be fancy in the job. Ronnie's a runaway train, isn't he? I've got to get out of the blocks, there's no doubt about it. It would mean everything. I'm going to be gutted if it doesn't go well for me. Huge. It'd be massive, you know, uh, I've managed to win three, but four would be fantastic. Two's great, three's brilliant, four's fantastic. And so, after 30 matches of this year's World Championship, there are just two men left standing, Ronnie O'Sullivan and Ali Carter. They've played a total of 173 frames to get here, scoring 14 centuries along the way, and here's how they did it. <laughs> into the final for the fourth time. A very special day in the life of a snooker player and Steve Davis you managed to do this on no fewer than eight occasions what was your mindset on a day like this well I think in a way business as usual uh, you may find there's a bit more of a buzz around the arena you may sense that uh, your friends and family are a bit more excited than they were but when you get out there certainly it's like another day in the office and you were guaranteed being played for the last week every day so you get out on that table and it's just continuation of what you've been doing now you've got to have a sneaky peek at the trophy come on yeah you might spot the trophies <laughs> there and you might have a little quick look of it out your eye um, and, and obviously there's going to be a photograph usually with it as well yeah. um, I didn't particularly like to be anywhere near that to touch it you know it's not yours until you, you actually uh, deserve it but um, both the players will be aware of uh, getting off to a good start I think it's perhaps the only important thing that's the same in every match okay Steve thanks Thanks very much. Well, someone's going to get their hands on the trophy. Let's find out who it is. Rob, they're all yours. Thanks, John. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is it. It's the big one. Welcome to the final of the Betfred.com World Snooker Championship. After 16 epic days, only two remain. It's the ultimate local derby. It should be an absolute cracker. A piece of snooker history 
will once again be written. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get the boys on the base. Please welcome this season's comeback king from talk of retirement at Christmas to the sports showpiece showdown in May. What a story, what a player. He produced an amazing comeback against Judd Trump and won his semi in style. He's shown real fighting spirit this season on and off the table. This is his second world championship final. He is flying high, he is the captain, he is Ali Carter! And now, please welcome the most naturally gifted player ever to grace the modern game. He has been inspired here this year, hitting six in a row against every player in every single round. When he hasn't been superb, he's been sublime. His legacy is already complete, but can he add one more crown to the collection, bidding for a fourth world title? He is so fast, blink and you'll miss him, the rocket. Rolly O'Sullivan! <laughs> So here we go, the first of a possible four-act drama here in the Crucible final. Eight frames to play this afternoon at the start of a best of 35 frames final. 18, the magic winning number. Michaela Tabb taking charge of her second final here. And in charge for us in the commentary box, Stephen Hendry and John Virgo. Thank you, Hazel, and good afternoon. And uh, there's always a special atmosphere for the final. And it, you wouldn't call it raucous, Steve, would you? It's a sort of expectancy of the audience. It just uh, the excitement is, um, is incredible before the final. It's a strange feeling for the players as well, John, because it, it's the first session of like two days final. At Thank this you. point, you feel you're a long way away from actually winning the, first the thing. Frame, Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. So it's Ronnie O'Sullivan who's going to get this final underway. Right, no shouting out now, please. Thank you. Yes, Michaela brought into action early. It was only a break off shot. Wasn't worthy of a shout. So, Michaela, she'll be feeling a little bit nervous. Just got to concentrate. As, of course, both the players have. That's it. Tournament pot success. That's what you need to be the world champion. 93% Ronnie, 92% Ali Carter. It'll be interesting to see if Ali adopts the same approach that he used in the first session against Maguire, which was a, a virtual no-risk policy. Yeah, I think he's dealing with a different kettle of fish here, though, isn't he? I think Stephen took the bait, if you like, Stephen Maguire, early on, where I don't think Ronnie will. I think Ronnie has come here this week and has proved what a great all-round player he is, good safety, and we know what he's like at cutting and break building. But, to be fair, I know a lot of people are thinking that Ronnie O'Sullivan is a very strong favourite for this, but I think the fact that Ali Carter has played him once before in the final, and Ali's, you know, really got a 
more experience now and a better all-round game. I don't think you can ever think of anything as being easy at this game. And what a test for you to come up against the best player in the world in the final of the World Championship. Test yourself against the best. There's, the, there's no better way of doing it. Ali Carter was saying yesterday that having Peter Ebden in his corner, he had the force with him, because of course that's what Peter Ebden's called, the force. And it's been standing in good stead so far. Just a little bit thick on that safety, which is why he's not found the vault cushion more the vault line. Yeah, I think from Ali Carter's point of view, he knows he's got to play well. I think that the big thing is sometimes you might feel you've got to play too well, you know, so you don't want to push it early on. You just want to let your natural ability, which is shown throughout this tournament, come through. But he knows he's going to be no half measures here. So that, in a way, takes a little bit of pressure off you. Very straight on this deep screw. If the black is not available... Well, the black must be available. Well, in the end, played it more of a shot that if the red went in, he'd just play safe. Didn't attempt to get on the colour. Another poor safety, really, from Ronnie. So close to the reds, catch a ball colour full in the face. Doesn't usually do that. Hawkeye showing us a situation, and as you can see, he could play left-hand side as we look, but he'd be frightened of running into that red near the top cushion, so just nestling into these. Well, it's OK, but that red just above the black may be possible. Well, I'm sure it is possible. I think at the moment it's what Ali's prepared to go for. There you see the red just above the black. Not even looked at it. More interested in playing the safe, safety, and getting the cue ball tight to the ball cushion. Best of 35. First to 18. We get the trophy. But as per usual in these matches, first frame always a very tentative affair <coughs> you know, whenever I played a player who I thought would play a little bit more negative than I did my safety shots would always try and I would always try and open the reds up as, as soon as possible try and force my opponent into to playing something they didn't want to play. Yeah, well, the reds are reasonably spread at the moment. It's just that Ronnie has been unable to find the, the ball cushion and put any pressure on Ali. Safety. And this is a good safety shot. <laughs> Excellent length in the cue ball.
Ali just checking to see where the, the reds are going to end up if he plays a safety shot when they're spread out like this. Obviously you don't want to knock anything over the pocket. The cushion. Yes, but as I said before, Ronnie's not putting any pressure on Ali's safety at the moment because he's been able to find the ball cushion and that just makes it easier. Now, is this the first pot on? I think it may be. Just run across that. And there you go, we're coming up to eight minutes in this first frame. Not a ball being potted yet. Is this going to be the first one? Can't pot it, but it looks as though he, he can to me. It's a thin one, but no. Nope. Well, he's played it well though, right behind the green it looks. I'm just thinking if that's a possibility. The only thing is when you're trying these type of shots, the blue is such a big ball. Well, he's decided to come around the other side. He's not certain to get this safe. <coughs> well, that was a good effort. He's not left anything on. I'm certain he'll be given another try at that. So he found a good line, only a minor adjustment needed. And we're just moving in on the action. Beautiful shot, that, isn't it? Okay, look. Like, just making certain the cue ball is exactly where it was. Ronnie's happy. Ali's happy. Just a minor adjustment. I think he's trying to nestle on the red that's just below the black. Mm, he's under hit this, has he? Or is he going to reach it? Yes, just got there. Good shot. <laughs> Little tap on the table as Ali Carter came to start his visit. Once again, I don't think he's left anything running that would tempt Ali. He seems determined early on in this match to keep it very tight. So over ten minutes and still no one off the mark. Yeah, I wonder what the record is, John, the final where the first ball's been potted. That was a great touch by Ronnie that that shot. KG stuff though. Yeah, you'd have to say at the moment it's Ali Carter who's dictating it. I think he may have snookered. Ronnie on all the reds here. And this is the fascination of snooker, isn't it? We know how well Ronnie's been playing in this tournament, but if you've not got a pot to go for, it doesn't matter how good you are, you just got to compete with the situations that's there. Just got to be careful he doesn't catch the blue here. Hit the wrong red, first chance, Ali Carter.
We're off the mark. Just under 12 minutes it took to create that opening. Where was Ronnie? He knew he'd hit the wrong red there. Well, I don't think that seems perfect. Six. Needs to be straighter on this red. I think the black may be available into the right corner, but he couldn't play for it off this red. He's going back up for the blue, and he may kiss into another red. He's just got to be a bit careful. And now he managed to avoid them. Seven. He did that really well. But at the moment, I don't think there's a red available into the right corner. It's perfect angle here to play a cannon and bring reds into play. Could he have seen that coming, do you think? No. He could never have envisioned that happen, happening. Red cannon, two other reds to go into the corner pocket, so very unlucky there. One. all the pockets are going. Eight. Nine. Doesn't want to be just off straight here, the wrong angle. It's uh, going to make the next positional shot a little bit awkward. through it beautifully and we know the black is available into both corners nicely on this red for the black in the opposite corner 70. of course that's the problem when you make a mistake okay Ali Carter unlucky but you leave your opponent in at this end of the table with an easy starter could very well cost you the frame 24. 25. Yeah, I think in the semi final, the Carter Maguire. A lot of the mistakes Carter made, he didn't get punished in one visit by Maguire. I don't think that'll be the case in these two days. Thirty-two. Thirty-three. Just checking to see if this red passes a pink into the same pocket as the black. Just as easy to play for it in the right middle. He just wants to come high on the black. He doesn't want to come low. 40. <laughs> 41. This black. And there's two more reds in the open. If he takes blacks with those, he's going to leave himself 58 up. With 59 on the table. Well, he just pushed one red in an awkward position. Yeah, he was forced into it, wasn't he? He needed to be a little 48. straighter on the black, so... You wouldn't think it'd cause a problem, because in potting his red, he should get a good angle on the black. Yeah, we want him to leave himself a half ball cut on the 49. black. That looks just about perfect there. Screw and try and develop a red here. 
Fifty-six. Yeah, maybe if it was a little bit straighter, we'd have tried to cannon into the three reds together, but uh, it boils down to the fact that he's 50 points in front, but there's still 67 remaining. So it doesn't look as though Ronnie's going to win the frame at this visit. Well, is he considering taking this red on? I always think these reds along the top cushion now, he's refusing it. If they're tight against the cushion, a lot easier, but... Once again, this first frame under his belt. Well, and that's a nice little flick off the yellow. Yeah. So he'll feel a lot more comfortable he's had his hand on the table. Took them well. Got a good length with the cue ball. But this red is definitely available. When you're playing them, you always err on the side of hitting them too thin. But maybe a chance here now for Ali to bring these three reds that are clustered together near the top cushion into play. Being 50 points behind, he needs these reds in the open. He's got a chance here. Doesn't want to catch these thick. The slightest bit too thick. He won't be able to get the white back to bulk. Mm, just a little bit thick, but he's, he's done well. He's done okay. trying to go back to the balk end. You can understand it in some ways because of course he's only going to make one more mistake and you would feel that would be the end of the frame. So I'm trying to keep it tight but didn't put any pressure on Ronnie's safety there whatsoever. <laughs> Although Ronnie may not be too pleased with that. Pushed the red a little bit too far down the table. He's got a good cue ball, as you can see. Couldn't be much straighter. Not much to angle to work with there. So this calls for good cueing. No, that was difficult. It was almost straight and you're just trying to pinch a bit. Well, he's not left anything. So no harm done. Another chance of a pot. was the previous one, uh, 10 foot 6, but just off straight, just trying to pinch a bit. This one, he's got a nice angle on the pot here. One. Nice pot. Well, might have landed a little bit straight in the pink. Oh, he's got an angle. 
Don't think he's got an angle to, to cannon the reds on the cushion. So might be forced to play for the red in the bulk area. Well, screw him back like that, you think, well, is he going to play the double? But Seven. No, I think it's just a safety because I don't think the double's on. Not from where the cue ball is. So trying to get in behind the green, you would have thought. Alicarto seven. And that's good enough. That's good enough. Pretty straightforward, just before the middle pocket. As we say, with all these shots, you've got to hit to the right pace, don't want to hit it too hard. Played it beautifully. Off as well. I like hard to four. So Ali Carter puts the cue ball anywhere in the D. But of course his big problem as we watch Ronnie here. Played the thin cut and missed on the way up, caught on the way back. Enough. Now what sort of an angle as he left himself on the black? I think if you were trying to bring them into play, you'd try to get into the two reds that are closest together, but if he hasn't got that angle, he's certainly got the angle to it, the one immediately below the black. Well, he did get in the two reds together and played it really well. Eight. Yeah, he struck that beautifully. Obviously too thin to stay Nine. on the black. A little bit more angle on this pink than he would like. Might have to play it with a touch of right hand side. Yeah, he wouldn't mind just finding the gap of those two reds. Well, he didn't play with a lot of side, but uh, he's just the pace of it well. As I say, these balls along the cushion. If the, the ball's tight on the cushion, they just seem to cling a lot better. Is there a gap? Just a gap. Oh, yeah. So I think you would have more chance of pot if he just played dead weight for the black. Well, that's what I was thinking there. I mean, for some reason he thought, well, I could miss this, and he's tried to make it into a shot for nothing, and then that makes the pot twice as difficult. Ronnie still needs the two reds, though. One. This black will put him 32 points in front with 35 remaining. And he doesn't have to do any heroics whatsoever. Just make certain you pot the red. Eight. And his opponent will need two snookers. There it goes. Very tense opening frame, but it looks like it's going the way of Ronnie O'Sullivan for certain. It certainly is now. Sixty. Sullivan, 16, and, the... and Nelly Carter does concede, so it was a half four. It took nearly 12 minutes for the first red to be potted, but uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan in the end won it comfortably. 1 0.
So we're well underway, and so it would appear is the rocket. Although there was a moment in that uh, frame and Ali Carter on the comeback, you thought you might have played that uh, shot on the red a bit more slowly, Steve. Well, Stephen did as well in the commentary box uh, and commit to it rather than play the sort of the home and away shot. Uh, he was hoping, obviously, that if he missed it, uh, the red was going to wobble and get away from the jaws. But John, I mean, you know, we were discussing whether or not you know, you, you're going to have to commit at this level. Yeah. I mean, he's played. He's had a game plan that he's used for the last couple of matches. The Judd Trump one, certainly with Stephen Maguire. You, it's got to go out the window a bit today because you've got to score when your chances come. You're not going to keep getting them against Ronnie. And that is one you've got to fully commit to, drop into the pocket, play the correct shot, which was dead weight. And, you know, if you miss it, you miss it. But even playing at that pace, it's not going to come away from the jaws that far. So, really, as a percentage, yeah. it was the wrong thing to do. Uh, and we are being ultra-critical of a shot that probably we both have played ourselves. Mm. But when you're sitting here watching, and as Stephen, Stephen Hendry in the commentary box, you can't get a you know, better judge of what's the right shot to try and clear, clear the balls. When you're sitting here watching, certain things you pick up on. So that's the first very small mistake that's cost him. OK, back we go. And it'll be interesting to see whether Ali Carter is going to change his strategy against Ronnie O'Sullivan, as, as some of the players that he's played have felt that he might have to do. Uh, intriguing so far. Yeah, very interesting to see how Ali Carter... But the only thing I would say, in his match against Stephen Maguire, when he started off with this sort of safety first attack, he did lose the first two frames... But it never altered his uh, his game plan. He stuck to it. No, I think if you've got 100% belief that what you're doing is right, then then that's a good thing. But I just think Ronnie Sullivan's a different kettle of fish. I don't think you can wait for chances against Ronnie, because you're not going to get enough, especially over 35 frames. can only hit the one red, and I don't think he can get to the left-hand side of it. So he may be tempted, well, you see, he'd be going for the pot here, I think, using his cue power to try and screw the cue ball back into Bork. Ooh, and he got a double kiss, which put pace on the cue ball. Now, is he going to leave anything, or is he going to run safe? I think the latter's more likely. Be careful where the cue ball finishes here. He's got to pot this. That was the problem. He was always going to run it into other reds unless he put a tracer side on it. He was only trusting to look for position and he's not got any. Now, will he take the blue on, John? No. If I was sat in Ronnie's chair, my opponent was refusing these pots, it would just do nothing but give me confidence. Yeah, it'd, it'd certainly take a little bit of pressure off your safety, wouldn't you? You know, you're thinking, well, if I leave him anything half difficult, he's not going to go for. I mean, that first frame, Ronnie's safety play wasn't really up to scratch. a terrific shot. <coughs> Tremendous safety. The 
reason I say that is, personally, I think Ali's got the talent to, to score with O'Sullivan. Perhaps not as heavy and as, as aggressive, but I think he's natural game. He could compete. Terrific part, needs to stay away from the side cushion. And he just about has done. Found a nice pass there between the other Reds. But what was more pleasing, and I think the thing that has been impressive with Ronnie in this tournament is his long potting seems to be back on song. It's so important. Because if you, your long potting's not on song, then uh, you finish what? up, well, two-thirds. I think that's good because I'm not certain about that stat because sometimes you're not playing the pot or you're playing to it them a little bit too thin and we might think there's a pot, but it's really more eye on the safety, so two out of three ain't bad. And that's what 66% equates to. Ronnie O'Sullivan, four. And what distance constitutes a long pot, John? Well, I don't know. I'll have to ask the stat man. Anything over six feet. Well, it was very comfortable. That's the only thing at the moment. Ronnie just doesn't seem to be getting his uh, safety play consistently to that ball cushion. And that's how you force mistakes from your opponent. This red will go, the one to the left of the pink. Needs a kiss on the green for position, and he got it. angle in the green here, stun off bolt cushion, right hand side cushion for the red that's to the left of the pink mm, just got into the cue ball a little bit too much Four. Five. Played that well. It was one of them you knew. Really needed to get through the cue ball there. And just his position perfectly on the pink. Not soon where the pink's going to go when it's respotted. You wouldn't want it on the black spot because that would really tie it up. Oh no, I'd be happy with Hello. that. Nicely in the open. This is a good chance. Twenty-five. Now you 
you see, just closing in. And he has a choice of reds. He'd like to play the one to the, the corner there, but he's now decided the one to the middle. Although he's slightly hampered. Gotta be accurate with this. And he was. With the black not being available, these reds that are in the open, he's just got to get them just right because he wants to play for pink or blue. And once again, I think he's just overrun it. Thirty-two. I was able to hold for the blue. A little bit straighter would have been perfect. He's got to be a little bit careful now. He doesn't cannon into a red uh, inadvertently, particularly those two near the top cushion on the right hand side of the table. Yeah, he might be forced to play in some sort of cannon here. The red below the black, I think pots to the left corner. But the problem if he follows through off one cushion is going to be quite a, leave himself quite a distance from the reds. Thirty-seven. So he found this one. He's got a choice of reds to this right corner pocket. Thirty-eight. Not bad. Not bad. He really had to force the angle there. Four two four. Forty-five. Back in perfect position. That puts Ronnie fifty-four points in front. Sixty-seven 51. remaining, but as soon as he pops a red, what will be remaining will be fifty-nine, so that equates really to this red and a pink. We'll put him sixty-one points in front, fifty-nine remaining, so Ali Carter stuck in his seat. Well, he was able to play for the black. Same equation. Pots the black. 62 points in front, 59 remaining. I think the other point now that we need to raise, Stephen, is is Ali Carter's safety play 59. good enough to keep Ronnie at bay? If you're going to play the tactical 60. side. I think we've yet to find the player who can keep Ronnie out. But he started the same way against Maguire, 2 0 down, so he'll know he can do it. 68. But I think uh, the opponent these two days is a little bit better. Needs to flick past that red, and he has done beautiful positional shots. Could see our first century of the final here. 75. Fred had donated 95. 200 pound to Avon House Children's Hospice for every century that's made. That's the association's chosen charity. 99. This looks like another 200 pound in the bag. Well done, Ronnie. Great break. 68th at the tournament, and Ronnie's 10th. Straightforward, but he made it look ever so easy. 
Ronnie O'Sullivan wins the second frame, 2 0. And there's confirmation of what John was saying. These are the century breaks in the last few championships since 2003. There we are up at number 68 so far, only surpassed by 74 last year and 83. Not sure that's going to be beaten for quite some time in 2009. So, well, he does make things look effortless. And I was reading Dave Hendon's blog the other day, and, uh, and he actually said that is actually to do him a great disservice because Ronnie puts as much work in as anybody else to make it look effortless. It should be one of those signs outside the door today. It should say, quiet, please, genius at work because that break was just absolutely sublime the balls were nowhere near looking like they were there for a century break his control of the cue ball around the pink spot was magnificent moved all of them stunt some of the stuns he played off the cushion to get back on the pink absolutely fantastic but you're quite right he does work hard he practices a lot in the club uh, you know he's he puts the hours in as well but when he plays like that, it's just superb. You know, when Ali Carter looks back on his record against Ronnie O'Sullivan, and in 11 occasions he's played Ronnie, he's never managed to beat him in a televised match. And I'll ask you the same question that John Verger was asking. Is his safety game strong enough to hold him at bay in a match like this? Well, it's also, is he mentally strong enough to turn around those 11 defeats? Um, because after a while, you would realised that you were being outplayed in all departments, not just the safety department. Um, he's 2-0 behind. Uh, he was 2-0 behind in, in his semi-final match, but he's 2-0 behind in a different way here. This is a guy that's just cleaning up all the time. I, I have no problem with him playing hard stuff and hard tactical stuff at the start of a frame. The only problem is, when he gets a chance, he's got to fully commit to 100% to score. Because if he doesn't score in this match, this will be, he's playing a runaway train. OK, into the third of this... 35 frames match. Good safety, a little tap on the table from Ronnie in appreciation. And there's Ronnie's pot success, 100%. You can't do better than that. 77% Ali, but... He's not had that many chances to... Well, I suppose he's missed enough. So these reds are very nice and spread as Ronnie plays a perfect safety shot. To get back to the ball, there may be a possibility of a pot on. Are they just looking at those two reds? I don't think they're a plant because I don't think the second one passes the black. No, it doesn't, but uh, he can play safe off the, the red. That's the most important thing. Just got to catch it the right thickness, though. I don't think this too thin. Just a little bit thick. But with these red spread as they are, it may not be an easy safety shot for Ronnie here. Sometimes, though, that can be a dangerous thing, can't it? If you leave a, a player like Ronnie with no safety, all of a sudden he can knock one in from nowhere. Very difficult to envisage that he could leave this. Well, he can't leave the cue ball near the top cushion and get it safe. There we are. That's the one thing about the crucible, no matter where you're sitting, you've got a great view of the action. So he's trying to find that path he found before. He did well to find it before, do well to find it again. He's looking like he loves the challenge of finding the right safety shot, John. And if yeah. he's enjoying it as much as that, he's what a dangerous opponent. Absolutely. And, you know, to be fair, we all know the talent of Ronnie, but sometimes he gets a little bit bored with it all. But every aspect of the game in these last, well, what, 15 days, this is the 16th day, he seems to have enjoyed and 
and loved every minute of it. And if, of course, he was pr to produce that, then uh, maybe he might be the man to break your record, Stephen. I think he's got every chance. As, as long as he wants to do it, I think he's got a chance. And that's the question, is he? Isn't it? Does he want to do it? Over a minute. Well, he's got a choice of a couple of reds to pop, but he's just rolling this in, it appears to me. Just hoping it goes in and then he'll play the safety, because he was never going to be on the colour. But I suppose, in a way, that was as good as you could do, because if you'd have played one of the outside reds, nine foot ten, that goes down as a long pot. But if you'd have played one of those other outside reds, he was kissing into the black, it was fraught with danger. And the way these reds are spread, you feel one mistake, let somebody in, could be end of frame. Imperative here, he finds the bulk cushion. Not so important to snooker Ronnie by in a bulk colour, but to get the weight as tight as you can to that bolt cushion. Green ball. <coughs> Alec Harto, one. Peter Ebden looking on. It's a long match and... So he, he'll be t well, he would have told Ali not to get concerned. You know what you're going to get from Ronnie. Sparkling play. Just play your way into the match. Possibly that was the, the advice. Well, it was only the pace that kept that out. But this time, Ronnie couldn't find a path back to the balk end. And this red is on to the left middle. I think with this shot, you've just got to concentrate on the pot. Because you being so close to the cushion, you can't manoeuvre the cue ball. No, absolutely. It's hard to see from here. He's got a natural angle to miss the cannon and other reds. As you say, just concentrate on making the red. <coughs> well, I don't think there's many players who refuse that. Okay, he was uncertain where the cue ball was going to go, but. He's lost the first two frames and playing it like that, driving that red into other reds, he was never certain to get it safe, and he hasn't. Yeah, I can only assume he was cannon in other reds and he was going to get no position from potting it. Hmm, well, we're only trying to squeeze that in. Now there's a chance for Ali here. His first real chance, you would say. Although he had a chance in the first frame. Not a chance as good as this. I'm just got a near jaw, and look how lively they are when they catch those jaws at pace. One. It was a nice shot, controlled it well. That wasn't a gimme. You've just seen your opponent win the first two frames the way Ronnie did. One good positional shot here, a feel. You play for an area somewhere in between the blue and pink to have a choice of reds. Well, it's come way short with that one. Mm. I suppose you could put it down to lack of table time, but he's 
did not hit that well at all. No easy red to go at. <clears throat> well, good recovery. Six. Could have done with a little bump, but hang on. Has he finished perfect on the green? He'll settle for that. Yeah, it was a nice pot. Found the path back up to the bulk here, and it looks to be dead straight on the screen. Had a nice angle just to drop on the reds here. And played for the area I talked about a minute ago, <coughs> in between the blue and pink. Nine. Now, I would say he has to win the frame from this visit. Not only for to win the frame, but to give himself confidence for the rest of the match. Ten. Fourteen. Fifteen. I know the reds are nicely spread, but he's desperate to get a good position on the blue. As well, this cue ball keeps travelling these distances. You can always run out of position. Yeah, we know the pink doesn't pot to the left corner. I don't know if it pots to the right corner. It doesn't look like it, so... Yeah, as you say, it's not straightforward, this break. He hit that very well. That was a great shot. Pink was just off straight. The, sorry, the green was just off straight, so... He had to force the angle there. Yeah, and if he can just get past the pink for this red to the left corner, he may be able to get the black on his spot. Well, it looks as though he could. Would he deem the black a little bit too difficult? This is where we say that when he gets these opportunities now, he's got to... We know what he's capable of. He's played superbly throughout this tournament. He's playing the right shot. He's playing for the black. Nice. It's all about sending a message to your opponent, John, isn't it? If he missed it, makes a mistake, and you're going to win the frame one visit as well. Yeah, it's uh, a bit of a mind game in snooker. And now he's got that 20. black, and it looks as though it's available into both corners. What a chance this is to get his first frame on the scoreboard. And get right in over his shoulder here. Twenty-seven. Beautifully cute as well. 34. So, so far, so good. He's killing the ball nicely. His first couple of positional shots were a little bit astray, but he's got pinpoint control now. 35. What we have got, John, in this final is probably. We all know how, how well Ronnie strikes the ball, but Ali is also in the top three in the game as far as I'm concerned in terms of striking the cue ball. He hits it great when he's in.
Yeah, and I think that's the only concern we were expressing. Uh, Party. Will he give his ability chance to shine through? You know, he can be a little bit tentative. 41. But certainly, he's got all the ability in the world, and when he gets opportunities, he's proven here. He can clear them up just as well as Ronnie. Maybe in the not, not in the same style, the same panache, but that's the same in any sport, isn't it? Well, nobody 47. does. Forty-eight. <laughs> Not certain about the availability of the two reds that are just the right and the black. You just have a look now if you can... Certainly the, the left-hand one won't go, but if the right-hand one does, then obviously if he pots the right-hand one, it releases the left-hand one. Just give it a bit of thought. Fifty-five points to lead, sixty-seven remaining. 54. So just another red and a pink. We'll put him sixty-two points in front, with just fifty-nine left. And after the first couple of positional shots, he's looked very confident, hasn't he? He's looked at one with himself, which is a good thing. You see, you see him hitting this ball this well. Well, you wonder why he's not taking on more shots. As we've said, he's got a game plan. He believes in it 100%. And he's in the final of the World Championship after all, so he's not doing a lot wrong. Sixty-one. Applause, because that's the snooker's required stage. And if he pots this red... Ronnie 16. won't be coming back to the table. Ronnie made a break of 117 in the last frame. The 68th of the tournament. Possibility here, we could see the 69th. Back-to-back -back centuries. And he's perfect Seven. on the red closest to the cushion. This is the one he wanted to pop first. Too many hard it wouldn't have gone in, but at that pace, gravity took over. Extension on the queue and possibly extension on the rest. I might be able to reach it. Just got to be careful with that yellow under his arm. Mm. Well, he's okay, a bit close to the black, but I think he's just about got the angle to be able to pot the black and get back up for the yellow. So that 69 century. He's still on. Oh, what a pity. What a pity. Well, we say you never settle until you get your first frame on the scoreboard. Halfway through that break, Ali Carter looked very settled against his first frame. He still trails 2-1, but that was a lot better. Oh, a huge sigh of relief, I'm sure, in the Carter camp. And, uh, and I think probably that demonstrates what we've seen from Ali all championship long and that strength of character out there. Yes, he's been fighting, and in the early part of that break, he was struggling a lot. He was under-hitting some of the positional shots. He was woefully out of position on one and had to dig out a really good red that uh, was missable. Um, obviously, he would have fancied getting it. No guarantee of where the ball was going, but um, as was mentioned, I think, by Stephen in commentary, he's got to show and give a message to Ronnie O'Sullivan he's able to do some damage out there, and um, 
and he went on to make a fantastic break. Mm. It really was. Yeah, but as you say, it is about mind games early in a final, and he has sent a message to Ronnie there. Well, he's, he's shown him that you know if he gets punched, he's going to punch him back, which is exactly what you've got to do. All the safety play and tactical nows in the world doesn't put any points on the board. You've got to score when your chance comes, and that's what he's done. It is very interesting in the early stages of this final where all of these mind games come into it, clearly, before someone establishes a bit of a run of form here. Um, do you remember from your experiences in the final it being tactical and cagey, and, and what was it like in those early stages for you? Um, I, I think you know, every match is a different storyline that unfolds, and you're always hoping to get off to a good start, because the moment you don't, you're all of a sudden struggling. Now, that's the way it is. You know, even if you've played lots of good shots, you look at the scoreboard and you're two or three nil down, all the good shots are irrelevant, and your queuing, your queue action, can ev evaporate immediately. At what point do you feel settled in a Crucible final, John? What, what John, just JV just said on commentary, you don't feel settled till you win your first frame. So Ali Carter's done that, she'll be settled down into the match, and. Uh, We'll wait for the rest of it to avail itself. OK, this is the last one before their interval. No, safety. Or break off shot from Ali Carter. Only just went right. He flicked the blue. If it had caught the blue a bit thicker. And if the blue is, just watch, caught the red much too thin. Just grazed past the blue. Lucky to get it this safe. Well, once again, I always remember, you know, when I was uh, just started playing the game, I remember talking to, uh, it was a great amateur in our area, Austin Whiteside, and, and he judged his game. I know it was a different game than not the high score, and he judged it by, he thought a good frame for him is if he never caught a bottle of colour on his safety. Yeah, if you play safe and you actually try to hit a bulk colour, you never could. But it's amazing the amount of times when you don't think about it, you don't concentrate, you catch in. It can be fatal at this game. As you say, John, they never move. They're always in the same place unless they're off the spot. Yeah. And if you do catch one full in the face, then you leave the cue ball on the bolt line, your opponent with his hand on the table. Well, that's amazing, isn't it? It's it much too thick. At the moment, Ronnie's safety play is not as good as... Well, it has been during the tournament. Not on first in impressions. And OK, he caught the blue, but he was never going to get past the ball line, the pace of that. But there was nothing there to tempt Ali. He's determined to keep it tight. Got a tiger by the tail. He's not going to give him any free rein here. Once again, too thick. But the green may come to his rescue this time. He may not be snookered on all reds, Ali, but I don't think there's a path back to Bork at first glance. So that puts him in a little bit of trouble. Tapping the table said, good shot. I don't think he really means that, because Ronnie was playing to get that cue ball to the Bork cushion. Is it too thick? Well, this is the two-cushion escape, and I'll tell you what, he's played a few of this these in this tournament and played him inch perfect. How about this one? Inch perfect. Put for the kiss on the brown. Well played. Yeah, I was going to say, when you play that shot, normally you deliberately miss it thin if you're going to miss it, just to judge the angle. Obviously, too thick would be fatal, but as you say, judged it perfect on the first attempt. It's funny, it doesn't seem that long ago, it is that long ago, when Cliff Thorburn was one of the first people who introduced that, but of course there was no misrule then. So you could come off the two cushions with 
with pace, missed the ball by a couple of inches. <laughs> the referee wouldn't call miss, so it was as good as any safety shot. I think the only telling safety shot here you could play is if you covered an escape route down the left-hand side of the table. Mm, Got to hit the red first. Five on a miss. Ali Carter, four. I don't see Ali having this replaced. The reason I say that, if he can get behind the brown, he could have Ronnie in trouble here, and there's the... The brown, the blue, the yellow, the, even the green. There's lots of balls to get behind with this cue ball. He's trying for behind the brown. It looks like a lovely line, and it's not a bad length. It's not a bad length. Well, here's Ronnie with the two cushion escape with pace. Caught it too thick. Oh, he went for the pot. One. Well. I think he's on the black as well. I think you're right. Funny old game, isn't it? <gasps> well. Ronnie O'Sullivan one. It's a surprise. Playing that with left hand side. Just push the white in to miss it thick. I think he's been fortunate. Yep, it doesn't appear to have left anything. that will go into this corner pocket now so just a safety shot for Ronnie he knows where the the telling safety shot would be behind the brown As of yet he's not really found a good safety but that wasn't bad now can Ali get through to the r red He's looking to see if he comes off the side cushion. Just, just at first glance, it doesn't look on. I'm just wondering if the red to the left of the one over the pocket, he could play one onto the other. Can he get to the side cushion and pop this red? I'm not sure, but if he plays it, he thinks he can. And he'd be a better judge than than us. Well, he's trying to swerve to get deeper into the cushion. This is dangerous. It was a good effort, not a bad result. Yeah, that's a great shot to swerve the cue ball to sort of straighten, straighten the line up. Incredible he could hit that red and not pot it. He needs a good safety shot here, Ronnie. And when he needed one, he's produced one. That's an excellent shot. And if he's covered the safety down the left-hand side of the table, then Ali's in a spot of bother. It's hard to say at the moment if he can get 
safe down the left hand side but if he can't it's so congested on the right hand side could be in a spot of bother I don't know if there's a red will go to this right corner The one where he swerved it and he got through the gap. Well, as you say, so close to the pot. This time he's just trying to nestle on the red near the pocket, containing safety. No return to ball was on. It's okay, but there may be a red to the left middle. Now, I'm not saying it's easy by any means. There you see it. Tight on the cushion, but. He would be going up to the balk end and may consider the only red he could leave is the one he's playing. Also, I think if he takes this red on and misses it, the two reds just to the left of the black, I think both pot to the right corner. So this is dangerous if he takes it on. It's a good white, but Ali's got a, quite a simple safety shot. The red in the left cushion, double it across, white up and down the table. Yeah, it was a good line from Ronnie. He was just four inches short. If it had been tight behind the yellow, obviously Ali would have been in all kinds of trouble. So I'm going to take a little bit of time to resolve this, because even if someone did get in with a chance, pink and black, more or less unavailable, it's going to be. Tough one to make a sizable contribution. have been a little bit worried about the cue ball going so close to the, the corner pocket but just makes it slightly awkward queuing for Ronnie here Pacey. I hate these frames, John. Oh. <laughs> Don't we all? Shh. No, I think no player enjoys these frames. At the end of the day, as I say, it's getting to the stage now that even if you did pot a ball, there's not much to, there's not much to get. Ronnie just having a smile. I mean, it's not a sort of re-rack frame, but... Uh, well, one's come on the other side of the table. Oh, and he's left one left the red to the corner but as we said before I mean what colour is he? But certainly when potting it he's going to run into the red you know I mean there was just nothing One. he could do anyway at least we saw a red potted
They say no two frames of snooker are the same, don't they? Well, he's playing the blue and bringing the blue into the middle of the table. That will help if he gets another pot. But the one he had to play in the, the corner, just in case a pot in it and playing safe. Well, it's an excellent cue ball. Excellent cue ball. Good shot needed here now to get that cue ball back to the bolt cushion. It's not straightforward. It's got to be struck very precisely. It's almost back to where it was. Super shot. It's almost one of these situations where you'd like to leave your opponent in a pot just to get things moving. Just say the way the reds are, it'd be difficult to make a free winning break. Well, there's a plant there, you see, and there's two reds that are just offset. I think he's thinking one of them might go in the corner, but... As I say, it's not the sort of frame where you'd ever think of a re-rack, but it's going to take quite a time to resolve, you feel. Only playing this red, he needs a slight angle. Not much you want. Not much you want. And it looks like the first chance is going to fall to Ali, but once again, the problem is he can pot the red. How about position on the colour? He's got the straight one, he's got one that will cut in the one closest to the top cushion, but he's playing the straight one. This is where his cue action comes in, lots of bottom, lots of follow through. One. And struck it beautifully. Needs a slight angle on the blue. I think he may have one. Just so he can get closer to these reds. Doesn't want to finish on the side cushion. Ooh, that's the last place he wanted to finish. Six. It's going to be hard to pop this red now and get position on the colour. Seven. Just settle for the one point. So just the safety. But at least we got rid of two more reds, up. only another 11 to go. Couldn't get back to the ball, Ken, but I uh, just played a containing. <laughs> just looking at the uh, shot that Ali Carter played a few moments ago when he screwed back for the blue. For the action he got on that. And uh, 
we got a black and white ball. There you go, you strike low. And that backspin, you see how it starts to turn back towards you. And, of course, not much distance between cue ball and object ball there, but... Uh, and it's not good that the cue falls off the hand. I don't know much of that, that cue action. That was... Yeah. I think he wants to retire, whoever played that shot. Yeah, I don't think anyone's going to own up to playing that. Back to box, so this tactical battle, tactical battle continues. We're just coming up to 20 minutes for this frame, and in all honesty, no end in sight. But it is a very important frame. There you go, just 20 minutes now. In the context of it, it's whether they go into the first mid-session interval with Ronnie having a two-frame lead, they're all square. Yes, the second and third frame are both one and one, one visit. But whoever wins this frame will still get a frame on the board at the end of the day. So these frames are very important. Very good. He's left the red on. This red will go. Well, he will know the importance. This is half a chance here. He can pop this. Mm, can't it much too thin. And the reason I say it was half a chance because we're now in a situation. If you could get a good angle on the blue you could really drive the cue ball into these reds and try and release as many as possible. But the half chance was missed. Back to the safety. Also, when you have long bouts of safety like this, you can lose your pot and eye a little bit. I've spotted a plant here. I don't know if anyone else has. The red just below the black is a plant. It could be made, it could be a five ball plant. Has Ronnie spotted it? No. It's still there. It's still there. Well, was it just not tossed slightly? plant now. This could release a few balls though if he's catching this half ball. And he was. <coughs> Chance of a pop for Ronnie here. Thin cut to the right corner. One. A little bit careless. He's let Ali get to these reds. Okay, he can't do much with him, and he might be a little bit wary that he could leave something on, but a snooker would have given him more of a problem, you would have thought. I actually think it's not a bad thing that he can see these reds because I don't see he can play down this side of the table without leaving anything on. Yeah, fair point, Stephen. 
don't know whether that's what Ronnie intended, but it might have turned out a good shot. Careless that from Ronnie to being so close to the red, he should have been able to avoid the yellow. So, chance of a long pot for Ali here. Well, when you miss it like that, very unlikely you're gonna get away with it, and he hasn't. He's left the red to the left middle. Red running loose. Yeah, it might look to people at home that they hit that very hard, but a lot of players are more comfortable playing those long shots, standing them off two cushions rather than dropping them in off one. one. When you miss them, it always looks like you've hit the ball harder than you did. Well, is Ronnie looking to pot the screen and screw down and try and release some of these reds near the black? No. Why would he? There is a possibility you could get position on the black here. And this is why he's Four. thought about playing for the red that's just to the left of the black. But he's just not perfect yet. But that will be in his mind, that red Five. just to the left of the black. If he could pop that and play a little cannon on the red just above it, then he'd be on the black and black in play. And we could consider a frame winning contribution. This could be the shot. Ten. That's what he's got in mind. Pot that red and just cannon the one just above it. Well, he decided it. to play the other one. I might have <laughs> preferred to have got in it a bit deeper and played the other one. Then you'd have had your hand on the table. But Yeah, he didn't get into the cue ball quite enough there. Cannon that red half ball, that's why you got a much thinner cut in the black. This is missable. Doesn't have to do anything with the white ball though. Oh, oh would you believe it? Well, what he's done. Sullivan 11, Ali Carter 7. <coughs> I think the black was actually going, but he's cannoned the other red. The black's going in. Yeah, and when he cannoned the, the other red. That is sort of a plant that pushed the red on further and quicker than the black, and it nudged the black away and then ran in the pocket. To be fair, it was a poor positional shot on the black that caused, that caused the problem. Good cut from Ali. Is he on a colour? He's on the yellow. One. Uh, yeah, Lloyd's. He's not great on the red, but he only has to pot it. The black's going to be available. Four. And the black will definitely be played now. He's not got the good angle on the blue. He was thinking maybe blue or black. But as I say, he's not good on the blue, and he wouldn't want to be coming in and out of balk. So 
Well, it's a black. Just got to judge it. These reds are slightly awkward. Well, I'd have preferred to have been a little bit closer to the red for the red to the left middle. I know they make them look easy, but eleven. Bit of pressure on this. Black will put him 23 points in front. Still 51 remaining. So you probably need the well, two of these reds remaining with colours. That's okay. Well, I say it's okay. I think he's just slightly hampered by the red closest to the cue ball. Yeah, I thought he could have played that shot with a little bit more pace to even take the red that is cannoned. Off the cushion and still leave a choice of two reds. Played the exacting safety shot. Twenty. Let's drop the black off. Black in the pocket here. One cushion. To leave the red in the right corner. Twenty-seven. Just another red and a colour, and he's going to that first mid-session interval all square. Twenty-eight. And you could say a long drawn-out frame, but Ronnie had the the best chance. That lifts on the black. And Alex taking me as well. So just as he did in his semi-final match against Stephen Maguire, he lost the first two frames, but went into that first mid-session into a level. And if he pots this red, you feel he will not come back to the table. Carefully, he's very close to the yellow with his arm. Or he was when he's holding the rest. Uh, there's a bit more of a distance away from it now. No. Nope. So this frame is not over yet. Ronnie O'Sullivan comes to the table, three. just needing one snooker. It's not impossible. He was never comfortable with this, was he, Ali? Always overstretching, it appeared. Always overhit that. And in all honesty, it was saved by the yellow. Because if that red hadn't kissed the yellow, I think it may have been on for that far left corner. So there you see it. 37 ahead, Ali Carter. 35 remaining. Just one snooker required. And if, of course, Ronnie gets a chance. He'd pop the red and the black. Didn't have that opportunity after his last visit. And where the brown is, he'll be wanting this to, well, he'll be disappointed with that. Didn't want to leave this red on easy. I was just going to say, because where that brown is, he pop this red, pop the black, pop the yellow, and then off the green, play a snooker behind the brown. One. So although he needs a snooker, Ronnie O'Sullivan, he's uh, he's not long odds to win this. As I say, pot the yellow and get the snooker from the green. Eight. Just looking at the angle here. Double the green up the table and maybe stun off the bolt cushion with the white to leave it behind the brown. Ten. The 
Looks about perfect. Just got a little bit too much check side in the white there. Funny Squared up off the bolt cushion. That was a good chance. And you, and you wonder whether you'll get a better one than that. I'm very surprised you didn't get the snooker there. And he's not going to get another chance. Well, it'd be slightly relieved there, Mohamed well, Carter. I'm sure when Ronnie was on the green, he thought he was going to come to the table snookered. But Seven. that seals this frame. Doesn't matter about the blue. Ali Ronnie O'Sullivan had a chance. Didn't get the snooker. Ali Carter. Well, he'd be pleased. Ronnie looked good. But we go into the mid session interval. Two apiece. It's just over 35 minutes, that frame. And to be honest, it's not the kind of frame that we were expecting. Went to kind of strange from the start, didn't it, John and Steve? But Ali Carter and indeed Ronnie showing great patience. I think that's a hallmark of both of their play throughout this, uh, this championship so far. Yeah, not a frame that either player would really like, but the only real thing wrong with a 35-minute frame is when you come out the wrong end yeah. of it. You know, Ali Carter would be really delighted to win. Those are horrible frames to play in. At one point, it looked like they were playing on a boat, didn't they? All the balls were <laughs> like in port and they'd all rolled to one side of the table. But it's, it's a horrible game to play in, but one, one that's really good to win. Sum up, Steve, what we've seen so far in the opening exchanges of this final. Uh, Ronnie off to a, a flyer and uh, looked worrying times for Ali Carter. Uh, in, in the context of what we've seen so far, I would imagine Peter Ebdon would be going back into Ali Carter's dressing room saying, great third frame, you showed so much character out there, even though you weren't in position, you dug deep, you putted some very important balls to keep the break going, and all of a sudden that was the springboard to winning that scrappy frame. Two all at the interval, I think Ali Carter will be delighted. I'm sure they will, and of course, as you may or may not know, in fact, that Peter Ebdon very much in Ali's corner here. Uh, he's been a friend of his for a while, but, but he's brought him back really in a sort of sports psychology role, which is rather unusual, I think, uh, in present day players for them to want to come back and do that. But it's a formula that has so far worked for Ali. And you may or may not know that Ali has had an absolutely tortuous time with his health over the last 10 years. He's been fighting a chronic bowel condition called Crohn's disease, and he's had several major operations to help out. Uh, by his own admission, a rotten season with his health this year. So the fact that he's in this final, he's produced such a marvellous run, is as surprising as it is impressive. With the season you've had, would you have believed you'd get to the final here at Sheffield? Um, that's a difficult question because I didn't, I didn't think about it, to be honest with you. I thought, I'm hitting the ball well. Um, it's difficult to see past Judd Trump in the second round. Um, but, you know, I thought, well, hang on a minute, he's got all the pressure on him, I'm out of 16, you know, I haven't won a match all year, I'll just put the preparation in, which I've done, got myself fairly healthy, and, and see what happens. And all of a sudden, as we saw, you know, I put the pressure on Judd and um, managed to come through that match, and, you know, I thought everything's a bonus, but then it wasn't really, because then I had Jamie Jones, and I thought, oh, if I lose this, I'll be absolutely devastated, because obviously I'm not favourite. Then in the semis, I'm thinking, this is just never ending, and I suppose it'll be like that tomorrow and, and Monday. Now, it's four years since you were in your last final. Mm. Do you think you're better equipped for this one, and if so, why? I think the last final I was in, I was absolutely um, shattered, to, be, to put it uh, politely. Um, you know, I'd made a 147. I'd gone from nowhere to getting into the final. Um, you know, I didn't know how to handle I was mentally absolutely gone. But... I've had a lot of close matches, a lot of tough matches, but I don't feel like I've got anything out of my tank at all. So you think being fresh has been a big advantage to you? Massively. I mean, I haven't played in a lot of tournaments this year. I haven't played in a lot of the PTCs. I, I never played in um, the, the ranking event uh, in China um, because, you know, I was unwell and, you know, it was um, a time for me to take a break, you know. And I think that's, uh, that's paid off. I mean, you know, Ronnie's done the same. And uh, I don't know, it might be a coincidence that we're both in the final. Um, but, you know, we'll see what happens. Now, you're talking about Ronnie as your opponent in that final. You haven't got a great record against him, so how do you approach that match? Well, I've got a good record against him in practice. 
but that matters, doesn't it? Uh, but uh, listen, I'm you know more of the same for me, and um, we'll see what happens. Now, what would it mean to you to be crowned world champion after saying early in the season you were contemplating retirement? Uh, it would mean everything. I think everyone thought that I was, um, you know, when I said that, uh, that I was just, you know, I'd had enough for the day and stuck the tweet out or whatever, you know, I'm retiring. But I was seriously, seriously considering. My close friends will tell you um, I wasn't in a good place at the time. I just had enough of all the travelling and all the matches and all the disappointment that I was feeling. So this is a bit, this is sweet to have this um, this crack at the final. I'm going to say I'm going to be gutted if it doesn't go well for me. Um, but, you know, maybe it, it might be meant to be. Do you think there's anything you've got to do better? No. No, I don't. Just got to, um, more of the same. You know, I know I've got to, when I get my chance, I've got to take him because I'm not going to beat Ronnie if you don't. Um, but, you know, like, Ronnie probably thinks all he's got to do is turn up to beat me. Um, so, we'll see. Well, he's proving already that that's certainly not the case. Ronnie having to work very hard so far, as indeed is Ali. But I think, can you just sum up for us your admiration for Ali, particularly this season, and against the background, which, to be fair to Ali, he's never, ever used it as an excuse. And, in fact, it's only in the last few months that he's made public properly all of the health problems that he's been going through. Yeah, it's a fabulous performance. Of course, the way the circuit's gone now is great for the majority of the professionals because there's so much work. But if you have got ill health and you're away from home at the time when it's happening, that's got to magnify it and make it even worse. So what he's done he's got himself healthy. He certainly practised, I know, speaking to him, he practised like mad before he came here. And I do believe that being fresh is, is a big thing at this tournament. I think if you've had a hard season, you come here at the end of tournaments after tournaments, you're not really in an advantage, but I think it's worked out well for him. And I think he's on pints of carrot juice at the moment. That's, uh, that's health freak Peter Ebden's influence. He says it's working miracles for him, Steve. Yes, and also, <laughs> less makeup you need, he'll go orange by the end of the tournament. <laughs> Something like that. And, and the good thing is, if the lights ever go off, he'll be able to see, won't he? <laughs> This is what he says, yeah. Well, whatever is on, it's, it's working, that's for sure, and it's good to see him competing here in this final, obviously. But um, for those of you who are, well, you have memories that go back a bit, you know, this is the 40th and the 30th anniversary of the late, great Alex Higgins at World Championship titles. The first in 1972, and then in 1982, the scene of his greatest triumph here at the Crucible, when he beat Ray Reardon in the final, and then invited his family, including his baby daughter, Lauren, onto the floor to celebrate. Well, a couple of days ago, Lauren was back here, 30 years on, to the scene of her dad's greatest moment. My dad wouldn't sit and have a conversation about it. I think he liked it when people used to talk about it himself, but there was no shortage of that. Everybody wanted to talk about it. I think it was a moment that he was, you know, immensely proud of. I think it showed a different side to him as well. The 33-year-old Irishman making hay while the sun shines. It was a great achievement, and um, I'm sure he's very proud of himself too. When everything was as bright as the blue sky. He looked so happy and uh, elated at winning. Then when I see a face, it takes me away to that special place. But if I stare too long, I probably break down. It's a beautiful moment that's captured in time. Oh, 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 sweet child of mine. As soon as people find out who my dad is, they immediately say, were well, you the tiny baby? And when you're young and you're growing up um, and going through your difficult teenage years, you're just really embarrassed. But now it's something to be proud of, and I'm so glad that you know, I shared that moment with him and, and like I say, it always can be remembered, so, lucky. Your new world champion, Alex Higgins. <laughs> you know, I've said before that my dad took a slightly boring game, sorry, <laughs> and um, I think he opened up the audience and, and made it quite popular. I think he 
had an amazing talent. I do think he was a genius. I know it's a strong word, but I, I genuinely do think that. I think he had something that set him apart from everybody else. Rebel, rebel. He was exciting, um, he liked to please the crowd. Um, you know, some of his shots would be like trick shots and like he's doing an exhibition. Swerve around the green, onto the top cushion, onto the Oh no, he's turning the ball. And because the people were important to him, you know, you don't get the title, the people's champion, for, for no reason. When I was younger, he was very, very recognisable. He was, he was really quite famous. We'd go out on a day out, and people would be coming up to him constantly for autographs and, and, and different things. And you know, we'd always speak to them and talk to them, and 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 it was great. And you know, we grew up not knowing any difference to what people asking for that. That that was usual. Well, I think my dad was maybe born before his time because um, the game seems to be a lot faster now. And obviously, you didn't get the name Hurricane for, you know, hanging around the table. I think sometimes other players tried to slow him down to try and get him out of sync of, of what he was doing as a tactic, but I think he would have suited the, the play today. It makes me laugh as well, like Judge Trump saying about Naughty Snooker. And I'd just like to say to, to Judge Trump, I don't think you were the first one that invented Naughty Snooker. I think my dad had something to do with that. It's definitely moved in modern times, you know, with snooker players tweeting and different things like that, um, which, you know, it made me laugh to think of my dad tweeting. I think we'd have to censor him. <laughs> In a way, I don't think I could cope with my dad playing sticks. I think he'd be shouting at the screen or you'd have to lock the, the dressing room door so I couldn't come out because it's so stressful. To me, it's just it was just he was just dad. It was normal. Um, it's all I've ever known. Um, you know, to me that's that's all, all he was, just dad to me. So it's hard to explain because obviously there was times when it was difficult, but yeah, it's it's just to me it was just dad. It wasn't as nice in his later years when obviously his health declined and um, you know I think sometimes the press painted him out to be kind of a, a bad person um, and focused on the negatives. Um, but looking back now, I like to focus on the positives of what he achieved and. You know, I'm very proud of my dad. He's a character, and uh, it's something to be proud of. I think that many snooker fans will he'll always be remembered by them, and I think people will look back on YouTube and different things and see how he played, and you know, would just think he was amazing. So. I think the best thing that he would like would be not to be forgotten. I'm sad, you know, that my dad can't be here today to celebrate the 30 years since, since it was a win. When I knew I was coming here, I was nervous about coming because I haven't been inside the crucible uh, since. 82. And then when I actually went in